excellent. Welcome back to another episode of the Amateur Hour podcast. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. We went morning, evening, then afternoon then. But I hope you're good whenever you're listening to us, whenever you're seeing seeing us on your screens. Episode 70. Let's do this, mate. We are back with a Rate Your Physiques episode slash Q&A. My man, how has the past 24 hours been? How have your last four, five, six meals gone, bro? Oh, it's gone brilliant. It's gone amazing, mate. I had a really, really good productive day today. Um, meals in, check-ins done, mapped out the prep with Tom, roughly, oh. which is exciting. Um, more check-ins, beautiful. Booking, booking more people in for calls. It's, yeah, it's been a good day. It's been a good day. Mate, that's an incredible Thursday, mate. Do you want to give it, um, well, to be fair, mate, we should do an episode on like how your prep is going or how your prep will go, but do you want to give them a little overview of like what you got planned, yeah. maybe? Um, so main shows, main shows that we're aiming for would be the Swedish, Sweden Grand Prix, um, uh, 11th of May. And then two weeks later, I believe is the PTA universe. So they're the two main shows that we're gunning for. The other two shows mm-hmm. we're doing are just so that we can qualify. Um, so the 11th of May is quite early on in the season. So I'd need to do a qualifier. I need to do a regional in the UK to be able to go abroad to do a show. Um, now, if we want to map out the season as best as we can, knowing how my body reacted last time to a slightly longer prep, we want to make this as short and as compact as possible to kind of get the best out of it for the for the two shows that we want to hit as like yeah. at my best. So we're get, we're going to gun for basically when, whenever two brothers drop their calendar, which I, I'd assume is going to be this week or next week. Um, essentially any show that comes up before the Sweden one for two rows will rock up, won't peak for it. We'll get the qualification. Obviously, if we, if we look good, we look good. If we don't, it's not. we're not going there to, to kind of compete for that. We're going there to just get the qualification just so that we can go abroad. Um, hit Sweden. Warm-up show. Sorry? Yeah, a warm-up. Warm-up, warm-up show. show. Um, <laughs> and then come back from Sweden. I think it's two weeks then the universe has a universe qualifier the same weekend as the universe so saturday yeah, juniors then yeah that will be juniors yeah that'll be juniors great Sweden, i'm gonna do most likely it's gonna be light heavies um yeah i might do juniors as well i don't know it depends it depends if it t- changes much in terms of like costs or anything but Mainly just going there to see, test the waters with the light heavies and kind of just see where I stand and also just enjoy the experience of going abroad and competing. And then PCA is the juniors, obviously. Um, make the most of being a junior while I am still one. Yeah, I've got a client doing the PCA universe as well. Exciting. Exciting. I've got a client going against you. And I'm going to be like... Yeah, bro, you can cheer for whoever you want, man. It's all good. Stop that, mate. I'm not cheering for you. <laughs> I'll arm wrestle Tom in the corner, mate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's what yeah. you uh, That's what I'll do. That's the big <laughs> win of the day. Um, no, I mean, I'm very excited. I mean, last time we prepped, oh, sorry, last time we prepped, last prep, we we figured out like towards the end, obviously, with, with how the British finals went for me, my body kind of just got really, really fucking tired towards the end um, and stopped responding. Digestion went all well, left, which didn't really work for me. Um, left the chat, mate. It just left me. Control X delete. <laughs> yeah so this time we kind of discussed like obviously the start point we're a lot tighter than we were than when we started prep last time so that just obviously gives us the ability to do a shorter prep um and I, I get lean quite quickly we had to slow it down quite a bit for the last one so this time it's going to be we know already that we're not going to have to slow it down if we just aim for a shorter time period of a prep so mm-hmm. probably going to be about i said to you before probably about anywhere from 15 to 17 weeks total like with all four shows in yeah it works best off like that man especially if you can get one two weeks prior to sweden so a regional two weeks prior to sweden then you got two weeks in between sweden and then you got two weeks in between sweden and then obviously the piece exactly, yeah. if you can have that sort of separate out and then you can push in between if need to be mate, it'll be absolutely sound it'll be yeah. all good it'll be yeah. exciting as well mate because i'll be there in sweden with you i'll be there i'll be there literally for every single one of your shows next season mate which is pretty cool which is yeah. uh, which will be quite nice but now we'll go through um We'll run through that actually in terms of because I actually put a post up about that 
a couple of days ago about not taking into consideration like how long your prep should be to, like always thinking about okay map it out from the main show which is probably sweden for you but also as well you have to take into consideration exposure to pds in terms of obviously um your pca universe how you're going to be then relative to obviously digestion going the look fading towards the end so you adjust accordingly and that's uh, something that we could probably talk about with uh probably first time coaches we can probably do helping first time coaches with their preps we'll do that so but i'm excited bro i'll be there for you i'll be in the off I mean, season as bro as much as the sweden is like the big bigger i don't know if it's a bigger show big probably the biggest show i've done in terms of like everything involved with you know having to go abroad to do it mm -hmm. um And it's also a pro qualifier. Have I done a pro qualifier? I did the two bros British, but we again, I wasn't... The two bros and PCA British, I just wasn't there for. Um, mm -hmm. in the look. So I'd say the PCA universe is probably my, my main goal because it's like I want to prove that I'm better than I was at the British. Um, and then that wasn't like actually a true represent representation. So... The PCA Brit, uh, British, I fucking hell, I keep getting confused. PCA Universe is probably going to be the biggest show for me. Nah, I read that, mate. It's a big show. People, I don't think people actually realize how big the universe actually is. Mm. Like, it's the final, basically, of the, of the start of the year. My, that's how I sort of explain it. It's like the big daddy at the start yeah. of the year. Um, don't get me wrong, it doesn't compare to anything near finals, but you get you get the drift. It's still, um, it's still very good, mate. So, I will, um, I'll have a few competitors there, bro. One being a junior, so I'll be, yeah. Who's that, Connor? Yes, yeah, shit. Shit. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, no, I'll be there, bro. But let's, um, let's get into some questions, bro. Let's get into some cues. Yeah. And we'll do some answers. Do you want to pull up some questions? I've got a fair few. Um, yeah, man. We'll go for we'll go for you first. We'll just um, total them off like one by one. Yeah. Jesus. Um... What do you think about doing cardio slash abs slash calves on a daily basis? Is this beneficial? <laughs> I don't know why I didn't finish that. Is this beneficial? If you can recover from it, I would say on like a leg day, I probably wouldn't do it in the morning. But then, um, because with the with the increase, for, if you, for example, if you're doing it every single day, I'd probably actively not do them on a leg day just to... Um, just there's not sort of like any sort of like cross reference there in terms of um anything but then again is it gonna is it gonna hurt I'm doing a couple of sets every day probably not um but yeah if i was going to do stuff every single day i would do it every day abs cardio did you say cardio yes yeah and then i'd probably say calves if i was doing it every day not do them on a lower day because they can affect, like, your squatting patterns, your leg press patterns, in terms of, like, ankle mobility. Yeah. So they're going in, think about it, if you were going in there doing, like, three sets of calves at 6 a.m., and then you're training at 12, like, and your calves are all, like, pretty tight. Yeah. Try going in as, uh, into much knee flexion as you can. Probably not going to be happening. So um, I would say from a routine perspective, it helps you psychologically. Great. I do cardio every morning. I do abs every day, but I do it before my sessions. So, yeah. Yeah, that's what. I, and then I do calves five five times a week. Yeah, so literally, mate, it's the exact. So I literally do. Uh, yeah, exactly I would that. agree. I think um, ab training. I think I prefer it personally. Fasted, um, just feel the, like the feeling of just being empty. I feel like I can it, train my abs better. I feel it better. I don't know if. Oh, that's... If I had the, if I had access, for example, if I had a gym five minutes away and I had my cardio there, I would, I would 100% do it um, okay. faster all the time. But yeah. my gym's like 45 minute walk away. So yeah. it's like my, I do my bike at home and then that's why I do it pre workout. Uh, but if I was to do it ideally, mate, it would all be fasted, get out of the way, get some good work in, come back, boom. Cool. But yeah. For sure, and as well, the person asking that's a good question to ask because nobody, nobody can ever have big carbs, carbs, yeah. carbs, and nobody can ever have too much of a good midsection. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, as well, if you're looking after your heart in the meantime, it means you can bodybuild for longer. So, also means you your sets are going to be better. Exactly, and your bracing, your health, your if you, if, yeah, overall you're going to be healthier and better. So, fantastic. Um. 
people, this person's asked, Primo in off-season, question mark, Masteron in fat loss, question mark. Your thoughts? Primo in off-season versus Mastro, Masteron in prep. Yeah. I'm I'm sort of on the fence with like Primo versus Master. I think they are almost identical um, in regards to the benefit that you're going to get from them. Obviously, they're not fully identical. Otherwise, they'd be the same thing. But yeah. personally, I think you can use either in either scenario. I think in a, in a dieting phase, I'd, I'd prefer mast because if you want to say it's drier, I mean, you can. Um, yeah, people have said it's, it's more anecdotal, isn't it? People yeah, do. It, it's... I say it, mate. I say if you yeah. if you go primo, if you diet in mass drop, and it's mainly down to anecdotal evidence yeah. in terms of what I do for my clients myself, but also as well when I am in a an improvement phase, I find that my androgen to estrogen ratio, I can probably push my estrogen a little bit more and I've got a little bit more primo in me. So like, I probably find that I can probably run tests a little bit higher with primo, but I can't run tests as high as I was with Mastron. Yeah, that's just myself there, um, and this is why this all depends on your own blood work, and your own. Like I said, when we're doing it yourself, this all depends. So I find that with clients, they can probably handle a little bit more, like sort of test based with Primo, and then you can sort of push that maybe like a one to one ratio, and then sort of push the DHT route a little bit in terms of Primo. But then you probably find that you need more mass to push test a little bit higher. I just find that you don't need as much Primo. So I would say hypothetically. I would do that, but then some yeah. people, some people do Mastron and Prima. Um, I've, I've got I've got Mastron and Primo in. Yeah, so uh, at the moment, I mean, I don't personally think if I was to describe if I could feel any different with them both in, probably not. Um, oh man, I feel like if you can feel something, it's like I've never I've only taken like one compound where I've actually like felt it. It's weird. Like don't get me wrong, I feel like what? I feel. Right. No, I didn't actually feel trend. MPP. Uh, it was DHB. Okay. That's where I felt it. I was there like, God. Yeah. But uh, I didn't really feel trend. Don't get me wrong. I feel when I go from like a um, physiological range to like, like a super physiological range, but I don't feel like, oh, yeah, like it's more of a fact of like, yeah, I just feel a little bit stronger. It's yeah. not like, but I wouldn't say like, oh, I'm on primo. Oh, yeah, I'm on mast. It doesn't really yeah. feel different but i would say that you in terms of your overall androgen to estrogen ratio in terms of what you can push and what you can pull in certain compounds i feel like obviously it, it does depend on the compound I, I feel and then primo is usually much more legit you can probably get a test that's masked as well sometimes so that's what you got to take into consideration with these um on the ground labs as well so there you have it that's what i would probably do yeah i would agree they, they are the same they drive they both drive the same pathway in terms of being yeah. a um, dihydro osterone that's why it's called a DHT um, but they do have different properties in terms of maybe Primo being more um, muscle selective and stuff and these different things but from an anecdotal perspective you usually have Primo in a, an improvement phase for building tissue and then obviously master within a prep phase where you can still build muscle obviously but more for diet and purposes Agreed, yeah. right um Okay, this is a little bit of a long one, or longer one. Longer one. Do you reckon you could restore your natural hormone levels when you stop, or will you be on TRT for life? That's the part that using that's the part of using that I find mad that you potentially have to stay on it forever. So I'm guessing that's like a personal question. So for you personally, do you think you'd be able to restore your natural hormone levels? For or, me personally, but I know obviously yours is slightly different. Yeah, this is where it's like a bit weird, mate. I think. So I had to go on TRT yeah. years ago, mm -hmm. years ago. So for new listeners out there, I went hypogonadal. My pituitary gland stopped signaling what it should do um, or how it should be signaling. Um, and I ended up going hypogonadal, essentially. So I ended up going on TRT before um, actually going into bodybuilding. But anyway, theoretically, if I was to go on um, PD anyway, I would confidently say that I could get my hormones back into a normal range with the right protocol in terms of HCG, all that sort of stuff, uh, making sure I'm in a surplus, making sure I'm staying active, making sure I'm in a surplus, making sure I've obviously got fats in a good range for healthy 
uh, hormone regulation, mm -hmm. making sure I've got the right protocols in place in terms of blood work, making sure I'm actually looking at my blood work relative to what I need to supplement in terms of from a supplementation perspective. And then going from there, I feel like I could. Yeah. Uh, I feel like the only, this isn't me saying you should do it, but the likelihood of you getting back your testosterone into a, a natural range normally, yes, it can take a long, 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 long time. But some people it can take 12 weeks. Some people it might take 12 months. Like it all, It's all into individual, as they say. It's all individual based on yourself and how you respond in terms of how. But then again, like some people can smash loads of HCG because they can afford it. Some people can't. Like it all depends on the individual. So I would say, um, look at your circumstances, look at you from a financial perspective, also as well, look at you from a psychological perspective. Can you deal with being off? Like people don't realize, like coming down to cutting testosterone out completely, testosterone is what makes a, a male. So you got to think of how you're going to feel in that time and how if you can handle it. Yeah, go for it. Restore those uh, hormones, get uh, FSH and LH back into a good range and. Oh, I think. What about you, mate? Do you reckon you could get it? Um... I don't know. Um, I think. Well, the, the so the last bit that he wrote, obviously, um, saying that the, it, it's the one thing that's kind of stopping him from doing it is potentially having to stay on it for life. Yes, it's potentially that could be the case for you. Again, it's it's like you said, it's it's down to the person, and you don't really know until you kind of do it. Um. However, I kind of have it from the point of view of, you know, when I feel like when when you kind of go past a certain age, when you're older, 40, 50, 60, I think that everyone should be on TRT um, mm -hmm. at that point. Just, just for, you know, improvement of, of your life. You or general be health, better. mate. It's better for you. I genuinely general believe health. everyone should. So when you're thinking like, would I have to stay on it for life? I in my in my head, the way I thought about it was, would I have to be on it for life? Probably. Would I have gone on it anyway? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's not too much different. Obviously, very different from blasting and cruising to fucking TR, like genuine genuine TRT. But I mean, that's the way I looked at it. I do. I think I could restore it. Probably. I think if if anyone kind of really applies it and it, it kind of falls in your favor, then yeah, you can. But at the end of the day you know the decision you'll make uh, you know the risks of the decision you're making when you make it so just, yeah. just take everything into consideration every single variable before jumping on peds for sure yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but um let's get into it another one Draw me. i get loads of these um like optimal ones mate oh god like for example is there there we go one second one second when what comes with elite level training accuracy for your specific training age less total fatigue so systemically if so are you mate just what? train hard just train hard bro please just train hard um so um suffering well here we go actually increase increase food on bulk as weight was staying the same cool. started dropping afterwards why is this so basically he started to increase his food and now his weight started dropping within an improvement phase why is this there could be loads of factors um hey, there could be so much mate. you go down every route here did did your expenditure change at the same time did you start moving more? Um, is there a lot of stress going on at the moment? Are you, are, how is your cortisol levels? Uh, is your Has your digestion been really bad and has it got better? Are you digesting your food now so you can actually process it and get get it through you? Um, it's mental. And this you, is why you it's, think important. It anyway. it's super important to take the average over a seven-day period and not just, oh, I stopped after one day. and yeah. it's, it's net. But I would look at, obviously, you've got, you got to understand what obviously you might have gone just into an improvement phase. So you might still be holding some dietary fatigue if you're obviously reversing out of a diet phase. It might lead to better training performance. When you're obviously going to get better training performance, you're naturally going to increase your natural neat levels, even though we don't really class training as some form of cardio. Obviously, when you're lifting more load and putting yourself under more stress and demand, you're essentially doing more. 
So when you're moving more and doing more, you're going to be expending more energy. But then in turn of that, you're going to be increasing a little bit more fatigue. So you, you know, it's like a little bit of a fight off there, but you might be shifting a lot of fatigue by actually being within a little bit more of a surplus and eating a little bit more. So this could be down to so many different variables, mate. Metabolic adaptation as well. Your body might just be um, metabolizing food at a quick rate and adapting to that, and it needs more to be within a surplus. Yeah. So that, like Connor said, it could be down to water, steps, expenditure, stress, sleep, food sources. Like you might be eating, uh, you might have eaten like 500 grams of potato one day, and next thing you, know, you might have to get like, what, two, like two bagels. Okay, well, food volume there. These little things man, make such a big difference, but I would just look at the overall um, average of your seven days, look at your training performance, see how things are going there, see body composition, how you're actually feeling. People don't take that into consideration. How are you actually feeling right now? Are you feeling better? Are you tightening up? Are you looking better, eating more food? Are you training better? Well, there you go. All's good. Don't, don't have to keep seeing your scale it go up and up and up and up and up. Yes, we want to see scale it slowly go in an upward trend, but... Mate, is there anything better than eating more food, staying the same scale weight, recomping and training, getting better? Like you're making the look at a certain body weight get better and better and better and better. So while eating more food, while training better. So, yeah. Yeah, I agree. That's why. Um, I think if you look at it on a, the, the, just one thought kind of came to mind was uh, Lucy's scenario, post-show. If you are genuinely fucked, say you are in a post-show period, you're eating more food and your weight's still dropping, um, health, get your fucking blood done. <laughs> like, oh, you, mate. you could be very well and truly in the bin with your thyroid. Um, yeah. So that is, again, a, a, another fucking thing to add to the list of, of a reason it could be. But yeah, gaining phase, obviously, I don't think it would be that. But, but yeah. It's all situation depending. You might be just sat on a prep or a diet phase. And the next thing they might get your actual health checked. So all depends. Agreed. Um, I've got one more question here, and then I've got loads of names for rate your physique. We'll do that. We'll um, do one. More. We'll do one more. That's do it. One more. Um, how do you boys? How have you boys got sponsored? Sponsored. So, yeah. um, I mean. There's, there's loads of things you can say. Um, be consistent with posting. Instagram is, if you want this to be a job, treat it like a job. Um, like whether that's coaching, if you're coaching on the side of, of a job you've already got, but you want coaching to be a full-time job, treat it like a full-time job. It's the same like a, a style of approach you should take with social media. If you want to make money through social media, treat it like a job. Um, mm -hmm. Post, find a niche. Be consistent, interact with others, um, build a rapport with your following. Um, be real, like be be genuine, because I think it's very very easy to tell when someone's not being. That's up. that's what I was gonna say. That's the biggest one. I've spoke to both of my sponsors, Pit Stop and Cookie Box, and I won't get sponsored by any other supplement company, and I'll be sponsored for Cookie Box for hopefully as long as Vic will allow me to, because. One thing they both said to me was, you've been yourself. We like who you are as a person. So that is what they said. They watch your stuff. Yeah. And I was promoting their stuff without actually being an athlete. So I wasn't going, yeah, use this, use this. I was just being normal. I was eating. I was, it was getting to the point where people thought I was sponsored by Cookie Box because I was promoting it that much without even realizing. I've always bought my stuff from Pit Stop. I always go up there, support, um, going up to support the boys in terms of when I go up to Scotland, like I'm going up there. like, And now it's the first time I'm going up to Scotland tomorrow as a Pit Stop athlete going to their event. It's pretty crazy. But what you find is that doing it naturally, like I have and like Connor has, He's found brands like Alpha Neon, like Gasp, who's been using for ages. He gets on with the owners and he probably won't see himself working with anybody else. Yeah. So, yeah, like the fact that I'm even sponsored is absolutely mind boggling because I used to look at people going, How is he sponsored? How, how is he sponsored? And my goal at the end, my goal at the start of the year was to be sponsored. And it came from Vic messaging me out of nowhere. I'm, I'm thinking of bringing on someone else and I think, Want it to be you? And then completely out of nowhere, Pit Stop as well messaged me. So, it's um it all comes through being yourself that is number one they both said that but the main reason why is because you are yourself we resonate with you as a person we like your values we like what you do and as well what connor said being consistent if you're showing yourself and you're showing your personality consistently every single day 
showing your commitment to what you do in terms of your clients, in terms of your work you put in yourself, people will see that and people will want that as part of their part of their business. And yeah. there you go. I also think as well as being real and being like yourself, don't go looking for a sponsorship. Cause I think that looks obviously if you're promoting a brand like you like you were saying with with like you were already promoting it uh I was gonna say insight, fucking in uh, what are they called? Pit stop, fucking hell, my brain just went dead. You were already promoting pit stop without sort of being with them. Just by yeah, just getting your stuff from them already. And I weren't even I weren't even like actively thinking about it, like saying no, I'm gonna exactly. get my stuff from pit stop. It's like I like pit stop, I like the brand, my well, mates. I'm not yeah, exactly. I'm gonna post it, and whenever I go there as well, make the pinch of taste bars are mega. I'm gonna always talk to yeah. other people, and then it just comes through natural fruition, mate. Exactly. I th- I feel like the the more that you kind of not beg for a sponsorship, but are are out there looking for one, it, it's just not gonna be as it's it's not it's not genuine because it, it you, at the end of the day you're you're kind of just going out there looking for free stuff. Yeah, the more you look for it, actually, the worse it probably is. Mm-hmm. Where. You're probably pushing it away, maybe. Like, I just didn't even think about it. And I had two random messages, boom, out, out of the blue. And, um, and yeah, man, like, I'm now, I'm now with companies where I back the values of the company. I love Cookie Box, always have done. I'll always promote it because I know their product. I know Vic and what she stands for. And I know Neil and what he stands for with um, up in Scotland at Pit Stop. And that's the people that I want to work with. So, yeah. Bang on. Um, cool. Well, let's do let's some go. rate your let's physique. That was nice, mate. I think five questions is quite nice. Yeah, just round. Quite nice, little, nice, little, nice little round number. Um, share my screen. Hold on. Instagram. All right, can you see that? Here he is. I don't know who this guy is, but wow. This is this is number one that came through. Um, very fucking cool physique. <laughs> Um, I don't know which one to click on, so I'm just gonna guess. Mate, learning. <laughs> yeah, man. Very fucking good. He's learned he's learned well. <laughs> I don't think he's much older than me. I could be Oh wrong. my god, mate. Cheers, mate. You just made me want to quit again. Appreciate. I could be wrong. I also yeah, say he's natty, but I don't know that. That that that's really good, man. Really, really very, good. very cool physique. Uh natural bodybuilder twenty. Appreciate it, bro. Thank you very much, mate. Yeah. I think I'll be quitting then. <clears throat> That's sick, man. Okay, is this guy is this is this guy prepping next year? Like oh mate. Shit. That is that is class. Very, very cool physique. Um, that is class, mate. Hey, yo. Little Leo? Leo? Oh, so he's coached by Alex from Pro yeah. Four, Four months, months in body weight. Look at the fucking arm. Jesus Christ. Yeah, man. Calves, mate. That's what... He was He was the guy that asked about the calves, bro. Yeah. Should, should I carry on doing it every day? Um, yeah, no. Mate, he just looks like a big ball of muscle, bro. That was a big fucking ball of muscle, bro. Yeah, mate. Uh, Leo. Very good. Rate it, mate. Highly, highly rate it. Um... That's ridiculous. Twenty. Yeah, natty as well. Jeez. Mental. Um. Right. Let me go to the beginning. So Adam Harding. This is a someone we've looked at previously, but just because of the show reviews, coached by Tom. I don't think pictures do him justice, mate. No. I really no. don't. Um. I think, which is probably an actual um, compliment to him. He is huge. Like, yeah. like, he walks out on a stage, mate, and he's towering over everyone. Like, he's massive. He's actually fucking massive. Yeah. So you're right. He came in so much better for finals, but it was, it was so good because I saw him at every show he did, bar one, which was the um, Two Bros, I believe. Did he do a Two Bros show? I think he did a Two Bros show, didn't he? Um, but I ended up seeing him at finals, mate, and he was so, yeah. So he ended up doing Two Bros. Uh, I think he came. I think he came third or fourth. Third, third, yeah, third. So it came. It was Con. Then it was Michael. Then it was uh, Adam. But um, 
he was really good, mate. He's just a little bit soft through the glutes and the hams, but then he brought it. He brought it so much better for the finals. Like his best look was the finals for sure. But yeah, I remember seeing him at um, PCA Yorkshire. Mate, Fair. mate, he walked out, and you were like, "Yeah, that's the overall. That's the overall there, mate." Yeah, wicked physique. I I saw him at the UK Open, which is obviously the one that he won last. This one here, um, it, incredible, incredible fucking physique, bro. Yeah, man, he is good. He is very very good. Man. I don't think pictures do do him uh, do him justice actually. So, no, not at all. PCA Pro as well. Rate it, mate. Hey, PCA Pro. Rate it. Um, we've got one of your one of your boys. Big dog, Logan. Are they recent one? Are these recent? -ish? No, mate. Those are in prep. Those were. Prep. Those are in prep. Um, I don't think he's got any recent ones, but um, we'll go off his prep ones then, mate. You can just tell from his prep ones, mate. What does he need? To, what does he need to improve? And what needs to be on static volume? Quads don't need touching, mate. No, think... don't stop training legs, bro. I think he's got like four sets of quads a week. Um, yeah, good. It's just, it makes me so excited for next time, mate, whenever that happens for him. Like, he he's a very, very good athlete, mate. He's a very good guy to coach, very fortunate to coach him. Um, we know the improvements that he has to make from a posterior perspective. Uh, but I believe we can, I know that, I, I say I believe, I know I can make him look way better this time around the next time he competes and that's a good feeling mate that's a good feeling but he's um incredible athlete applies himself massively and um he's making great great progress mate he's been working with me now for about five months yeah and yeah. looking to compete in 2026 so yeah. we've got a long off season ahead of us mate so as you can see there man like that was his last show after a long actually 27 weeks of prep there so you can just tell very, very good. Very, very good. Yeah. Just need more, more, more top line in some shots, delts, arms, calves. He knows the drill. He knows the drill, mate. Posterior as well. Not, I'm not saying that he needs improvement everywhere, but he's got that, he's got that physique where if he just has more muscle everywhere, it would just be ridiculous. So, agreed. Yeah, man. Very, very well balanced physique. Yeah, yeah. man. It's good. It's just bringing up certain parts and, and he's there, bro. Yeah, for sure. Very for sure. Big Billy. Um, Dan Bastic's client. We've got some recent ones. I saw this dude compete not not this year, last year at uh, PCA Midlands Pro. And also as well, I saw him compete at the PCA Finals and he was skinned, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was skinned. Um, pretty ridiculous, mate, genuinely. Uh, that was PCA Midlands, that was. Because that got took by Gaz. Yeah, mate, won the, yeah, mate, he won the overall, mate. Won the overall in that show. Um, which, mate, he was a standout there. There we go. Yeah. Mate, you, yeah. It was it, it was it was a really really good look, mate. Really good look. I know he's uh, coached by Dan, so um, yeah, great rig. Give it a second, um, bro. It's incredible, and his even the off season pictures look fucking sick, like full blown thickness. Well, oh, mate, he's really well balanced from head to toe. Really well balanced. Um, he's just a great bodybuilder, bro. Yeah, he's bubbly, mate. Yeah, yeah, bubbly for sure. Excited to see. I'm assuming he's he's going again. 25. I think he's going next year, mate. Good. I think he's going next year, which is going to be good. But yeah, Billy Stella, you have a stellar physique, my friend. Big Henry, um, oh, himself. Hey. Henry, Henry, oh, Henry, Henry. I actually messaged him to um his progress from the start point of his last last year's or well, not last year's prep. Yeah, it was last year's prep. I think I saw the one on his story. Yeah, mate, and he was um everywhere has just grown. Yeah. Everywhere has grown. So did he post that or was it on his story? 
it was definitely not a story, mate. Yeah. Definitely not a story. I've followed, mate, I've followed Fat Henry for years, mate. He was actually one of the first people I followed when I started getting into bodybuilding. If I actually look up to our messages, we probably spoke in 2022, 2021. So um, I've seen him since he was been like smaller. <laughs> now he's bigger. But um, I remember, I remember seeing him compete because obviously he was coached by Tom as well, um, or still, so still is. But like um, he was being coached by Tom at the time that I joined up with Tom, and when I saw he stepped on stage. As a junior, it blew my mind that a junior could have a beard that fucking big. I, I, I was, there's no way he's a fucking junior. There's no way. Oh, mad. I was thinking, I wish I could get a beard like that. And then now, oh, honestly, still not I, there. I want to. I want to fuck up. I want a George Osborne beard. Henry, oh. tell us how you got a beard, son. Yeah, what's the what's the fucking the deal? No, really, really good. Um, I think this is exciting because he looks a lot like he's managed to keep the shape. But also just bring everywhere up along with it. Um because he's got a very, very wide, like in his front double where his lats fucking come out up top. He uh-huh. looks really good. Um it's exciting. I'm excited to see what he does. I, yeah. Is he going yeah. in 25? I don't know. Oh, I think so, mate. He's improved everywhere. Um yeah, like, yeah. Four weeks into arms. the final push up prior to 2025, bro. Yeah, man, his arms have come up, probably been a little bit more. Um back shots come up maybe like a little bit more upper back because his lats are really good from the front mm. quads have come up but I know he struggles with his um, I see him do like reverse banded um, hack squats which I know he doesn't want to do but I know he has to do for him so um, quads okay. I know training quads probably been a, been a little bit of an issue for him so um, he he knows the areas like he's a good coach great athlete um, mate do, do you just look at some people and go mate like I'd just love to have someone like that and just like blow them the fuck up like yeah you know what I mean? Um, nah, he's good. He's, he's really, really good, mate. Made some uh, vast improvements. Yeah, so push. Yeah, so yeah, as you can see here, look. Push, pull and hamstrings, yeah, from the rear. One leg day. So, um, like, quads from the front there are good, but it's more through the hamstrings in the back. So, yeah. guessed, uh, I guess, right. Indeed. Yeah, so, we, yeah, so back and arms. There you go, mate. There you go. Um, who was next, Mr. Alex? Oh, big Alex Carr, <laughs> my yeah. man. Um, I'll give a little bit of context. So, big, big push up phase. Uh, uh, let me give a bigger context, right? Alex first came to me around this time last year at I think he was 106 kilos ish, 106, 105. Um, Came to be around then, went into a prep all the way down to 73, 74, I believe. Um, and now we're back up and we're sitting around 100 to 102 at the moment, holding around there, pulled gear out. or not out, we've gone down to the TRT now after his first like proper off-season push with me. Um, holding a TRT sort of cruise dose, then blood's done, assess where we're at, go into a little clean-up phase in the new year. Uh, and then push again uh, and go again because he's he's just improving on everything at the moment, which is awesome to see. Um, I've never seen someone kind of improve at the rate he has from from the start point he had. Um, so I'm absolutely fucking buzzing with it, to be honest. Oh, mate, he's improved massively. He's done exactly what he should have done. Handled his, uh, his post prep really well. And guess what, mate? He just got through the continuous or the continuity that is called bodybuilding and uh he's done it every day i see him every week improving him improving his lifts and he's doing exactly what a bodybuilder should do and guess what he's seeing the rewards from it so mate hats off you and connor are doing a great job my friend keep doing it bro. look at the look at the detail he's still got in this fucking quad but the thing is, mate, like he doesn't, like, what's it? yeah, so mate, like you were, yeah, you're in a perfect spot, mate. Like, you're absolutely in a perfect spot. Like, you can do like a little, little clean up, maybe like a little tidy up, like nothing major, short, yeah. sharp, aggressive, pull up, pull back, boom, sky's the limit, exactly, bro. Um, very, very cool. Big Alex done, he knows the improvements, mate. Chest, he's very delt dominant, chest. Quads are good. Side legs good. He knows the improvements, mate. You know the improvements. Of course, bro. 
Um, Brandon Doherty. I think. Mate, I saw this kid. Teen bodybuilder, nineteen. Yeah, mate, I saw. Yeah, yeah, mate, that's where I saw it from. Josh Lee Fit. That was it. That was it, mate. Saw his pre-prep diet, mate, and I was thinking, mate, this kid's a teenager. Like, what is going on here? Um, yeah, mental, mate. Really, really good. Really, really good, mate. You can tell that he applied himself. You can tell that he shifted a good amount of weight. That was that was uh that was needed to make his uh his prep your prep now, mate, is gonna be a lot better now your set point is better, mate. Um very, very good, mate. Shape's really good as well. Yeah. Look at the fucking detail he got into his quads, yeah. Yeah, man, he's not far off. He's exactly where he's he's exactly where you should get, mate. Um he's probably about ten pounds off, ten, twelve pounds off of being like absolutely skinned, probably actually around sort of nine ten pounds a bit off the quads maybe but you might have trained like post legs i don't know mm -hmm. but um or it might just be fatigued from just generally doing cardio and steps and all that but um i believe he's probably about 10 to 12 pounds off being like legit skinned yeah it's pretty good mate i rate that really really cool really, really really cool mate i think more muscle everywhere you know the drill mate you're young you're a young gun keep doing what you're doing and uh just keep training how you're training by the looks of it mate 200 kilo SLDL. For 2.9, I think you 2. put 9 there. 2.9 reps. 2.9 reps. So keep, keep working on that hip extension, Lee. You want? Oh, what? Oh, mate, he's teasing us. Stop teasing Quick, us. Mate. Quick, mate, is, this what the, is, this, is this what the natties do? Like, tease us about it. Come on, mate. Like, right. Come on, let's go. All right. Here he is. Walk, walk, walk up to the bar. Stand behind the bar, look at the bar. There it I is. I want to see. I want to see a scream. He's looking at the bar. He's breathing at the. Okay, now he's going to stop it. He's going to walk up. He's going to strap in one. He screamed. I saw it. There you he go. Screamed. Okay, there we go. He's at JP's gym, mate. Let's Cybex back in the background. First thing I'll say there, mate, is you can get this for about five reps. Mm. Easy. Bar travel. That's two. I would say. That's three. Three point nine, mate. He must have made that when he was absolutely trashed. Yeah. Um, bar travel, keeping it not not too close to you. It's an SLDL. It's not like a deadlift where you want it really close to you. But I would look at making sure you're just engaging that lats, putting more pressure through that through that pinky finger, engaging the lats from the bottom, taking that slack out, and you'll be all good there, bro. Get that for five, easy. Yeah, bro. Excited. That's a good. That's a really really good one. Even like, yeah, the like transformation too, man. Nah, I rate that highly, mate. It's good to see. Kid loves bodybuilding, loves the process. Is there much more that you want? No, there isn't, bro. Love it. Cyrus Yang. Yang? Oh, yeah. Hey. 18, natural team bodybuilder, 2025. Love it. Love it. Oh, I'm mate. assuming coached by Josh as well, but I don't know. Um, Just because these... So the next three we're looking at all came in one, I believe. Um, really good man new macro so now a little five week diet act to tidy up to grow it back looking at one okay okay so he's probably so that's November so he's probably looking at competing towards the back end of next year if he's dieting now and then he's probably going to push up for like his whole maintenance or just a slight surplus for about a good four or five months and then go from there so he's probably looking at like the back end of um, PCA Naturals Never probably the fifth but PCA Natural show so Cyrus, rate it, brother. Definitely the right thing to do, mate. Pull back, get a good bit of that, get a good chunk of fat off, mate. See where you need improving. Get food up to a good spot. Training looks sick as well. Is that young play trackies? Is that, is, that, is that Vanquish trackies? Mate, Van, oh, young LA trackies on? I have no idea. Young LA trackies yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, guy, the guy's a G. The guy's an absolute G, mate. Hack squat. That's strong. Mate, love that. That that yeah. is that is sick, mate. Yeah, I'd be gassed about that as well. Good man. That's that's the stuff you love, bro. Muscle heart as well. Love that place. That's a very heavy fucking T bar row as well, I'll tell you that. Yeah, mate. mate it's the uh, Watson T bar. Load. Um mate. mate. Sorry, there mate. Big dog. Mate, keep oh. doing what you're doing, bro. Okay, keep doing what you're doing. 
love training, train hard. I see he's at Autumn at Fitness Birmingham there as well, mate. Yeah, yeah. In my ends, nearly. Hitting all the good gym. Um, mate, love it. Oh, he's in Scotland. Scotland as well. Mate, the, guy, the guy's yeah, like English all yeah. over the gas. Catch my Josh, cool. Mate, rate it. Rate it, rate it, rate it, mate. Good shit, man. Very good. Um, um, Leo Hamilton. Leo. Mate, is this is another Scottish dude. Yeah, it is another Scottish mate. I feel like these all came through. Yeah, so the past, the, this one, and then the last two were all in one box. So, mate, I'm assuming they're all like training friends, Train. gym friends. Yeah, <laughs> one and a half takes on the day. Uh, brilliant. I back this. This is a nice little group they've got going on there, mate. It's it's, it's quite nice to see. Um, he's got four. He's got four and a half plate Starbex hat going on. Where? Four okay. and a half plate Starbex hack. Go on. I want to see the depth. Okay. Okay, okay, Leah. You know, three weeks post photo shoot doing that. Okay. He's got that rebound strength. Yeah, mate. Is that extra squares bars have gone straight to his legs? Oh, no, not squares bars yet, mate. Nah, these guys will be feeding off some jasmine rice. <laughs> Josh makes some naughty uh, some naughty pancakes, bro. So he's probably got the anabolic, anabolic French toast going on or something. I don't know. Yeah. There you go, 92 to 76. Good point. Mate. mate, love to see it, bro. Absolutely love to see it, mate. If you, if you see it at the pit stop event, mate, come and say hello. And that's all the Scottish all the Scottish crew as well. Trains at JP's, mate. Love it. I'll be at JP's on Saturday and Friday evening. Fuck yeah. Stick. Really, really cool. Mate, class. Keep doing what you're doing. Leo, big dog. Good man. Smashing it, bro. Um... Big Cam Underwood has put himself mate. put himself forward. Mate, he's got some recent ones which he said that we should look at because we have looked at him previously quite a while ago. Um, this one was six weeks ago. I'm pretty sure this is the most recent. That, that. There's, like some post -work, there's some post workout, but fasted pictures are the, the true representation. So, Mate, class. Again, just somebody who just does the do, mate. Does the do. Yeah, mate. He's uh, he's look at his side leg. Come he's on, improved. Man. He's improved. I'm excited to kind of see what he does on stage. Yeah, it'll be good to see what shows he's doing next year. Um, I know he's probably shooting for the PCA finals next year. I don't know whether it's is it his last year as a junior, probably. Um, I think it is. Yeah, so he's probably shooting for the finals, mate. So, no, 22. So it's not. Wow. No, it's not. Um, so he could do. He could be doing any show this time next year. So fair play to the geezer. Rate it, mate. Improvements everywhere. I've always liked this side leg. He has got a good good hamstring drop as well on him. Yeah. Probably more top line stuff there, mate. But then again, like again, like it's good. He's he's made some mega improvements from last time round, which is the main thing. So Yeah. Yeah. Just more more top line. That's what I would say. That's literally what I'd say there, bro. We got another oh, one. Oh, Jasper. Jasper. Big dog. Four years out. <laughs> four, mate. Four years out, mate. Is that the plan? You know what the plan is, mate, for him? The plan for him, mate, is just keep improving and the stage will be there in however many years it needs to be. He needs to grow muscle. He's got the application. Okay, he's got everything there. He just needs more. Like, like and that. that's the answer within itself. When more is more, that's when we go back on stage. When we get that more, that's it. So... Um, he knows what to do. Got a plan in place, mate. He executes the plan. Um, and again, mate, another one that I'm privileged to coach. He's um he's a very 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 good athlete, and he applies himself like he should do. So can't really ask much more from him, mate. Communicates effectively. Send across his training clips. I'm seeing him next week as well at the uh at the at the meet up. We'll see where he's at from a body composition perspective now. Now he's probably around. Goodness me. Probably half a year now post show, which yeah. is mental. But uh, he knows the drill, mate. It's got to be in a surplus. We're in a nice lean, responsive position. Everything's going really well. He's getting stronger. So, 
can't really ask much more, mate. Food's in a good spot. So, and he's grown like a weed, to be fair to him. So, mm. to get... good, bro. He needs he's more top line, more arms to match the delts. Mate, he needs more everywhere. Like, he knows that. Good, Everything's bro. there, mate. Everything's there. We just need more of. And that's the best part about coaching, mate. He's just having fun with it. Good. Just enjoying the process. Exactly, mate. And that's what it's all about. Um, Camille. 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 And part of the Archer Academy. Jack Archer, another one of my clients. Big dog. So, mate. Where, waste where? The fucking quads, bro. Where is the waste? Yeah, to be fair. Um, great, bro. Really, really good shape. Really good shape on him. Quads are ridiculous. Make sure you bring your legs closer together on your front lat spread. Close that adductor gap. Don't need to stand as wide. But yeah. other than that, I think because he's got quite a, quite a good um, sweep going on as well. You can get away with bringing find, him close. Closer. Find if you bring him close together with a good sweep on a front lat. Like it just looks so much nicer. It looks so much more appealing to look at. It makes the waist look better because yeah. you're actually you're in the weight, you're making, making legs to come in. It makes you quad sweep and then it comes up to the hip and then next thing you know. Um, but now, nah, mate, really good. Really, really good. Good side legs. Um, yeah, 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 man. Side legs, class. Everyone's got hamstrings now. Yeah, mate. Give me some hamstrings, please. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, man, really, really good. Really, really good. More arms, more top line, minimal leg volume going on. That's what I would do. Um, I wouldn't say minimal leg volume, but just like just keep it at a good volume where you can recover from and just prioritize other areas. Probably back as well, like posterior, maybe. Um, so I would say I'd say switch the hand positioning here. Yeah, yeah, don't straighten the arm out. Only if you do, have it like behind your glutes, so you can't see like. Yeah, all, all but I'll, like you know, so this this obviously the the front arm is what I'm going to call it. The hand here is facing upwards. I want it facing downwards so that it's closer to your body. So there's no gap here because you want to minimize any sort of gaps for the judges to see through your physique. Um, if you just twist your hand, so basically this hand will go palm down, the other hand will go palm up. And you'll just link them that way. Um, that's just going to bring this arm closer, close this gap. Still going to get tricep flexion. It will still look really good. It will look better just because it's closing the gap. Because this is a very strong pose for him. Got good arms, good delts, good chest, good midsection, and good fucking leg. Just fix it's all there, bro. It's yeah. all there. The foundation's there. That's a very, very good pose for him. Sick. Really good, mate. Really, really good. Big, big up Camille. Big up Camille. Uh, we got Connor McLean. McLean? 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 Um, Connor McLean. So he put, he put on his thing, uh, I can't remember word for word, but it said, physique, oh yeah, it said, physique is a work in progress, but check out my transformation. Is what Mate. he did. Fucking sick. sick. Very cool. Very nah, good. That's, that, that's, mega, that, that's really good, mate. Honestly, that's probably one of the hard. That's probably the hardest transformation you're ever going to have to do for yourself. It's only going to be up from here now. Right, that, those are the best ones, man. Like people don't realize to get to that position on the left, that takes a long time, bro. Mm -hmm. And that's not putting anything against you, mate. Like that takes a long time. And for you to look at yourself and go, you know what, it's time to change, and then literally subsequently put yourself in that position on the right, mate. That's hats off to you, bro. Yeah. Hats off to you. That is admirable. So. Good man for the end of the day, mate. Probably putting years on your life. Yeah. So, uh, class work, class work, mate. Is that 75 kilos off? Let's see. Weighing in it. Oh, no. So, 25. See, so 55 kegs off, mate. In how long? That's, a bikini, that's, the, that's the bikini athlete, mate. That's insane. That's, that's like six kilos more than Lucy weighs. Six? Yeah. Like Close to that's more than what Lucy weighs. That's yeah. mad. Sick, bro. Really, really good, mate. Really, really good. Yeah, insanely good. Should be very, very fucking happy with that, mate. We've got two more, I think, from my end. But cool. I've got one. I've got one more here, and then we'll go. We'll do yours. 
Ollie, this is your client. This is my client. Yeah. Um, hopefully competing this year. We're actually going to plan out his prep over the next over the weekend. Um, when this decides to load. Very very exciting. Never competed before, so it will be. I don't know if we're going to do a first time the show, but it will be his first time competing. Um, I think he wants to do classic. I could be wrong. I'm pretty sure he said he wants to do classic, mate. So we'll see. Um. I don't know for a fact. I'm pretty sure he's six foot. He might be five ten, five eleven, but I, I, I'm pretty sure he's six foot. He looks tall, but he looks in a great spot. Like. Really, really good. Um, I think so. Essentially, I coached Ollie two years ago. No, I don't know. I, I coached him before, um, and then he. Didn't really want to carry on or couldn't or couldn't at the time. So we, we kind of he did his own thing for a bit. Then he came back to me earlier this year. Uh-huh. At this. So this was what he came to me. Mate, this is taking forever to load. Um, so he came to me and I said, All right, let's get you in a diet. So I want to see if you know how because he mentioned that he wanted to compete at some point. So I said, I want to see how well you can diet. Um, because it's a difficult thing to do, obviously. Um, and he proved himself very well, got absolutely peeled. Um, and now we're just reversing him up into a nice off-season phase to uh, obviously then hold good condition whilst pushing up um, and then go into potentially doing a prep. Mate, I rate it, mate. Yeah. Highly, highly rate it. No, he's a good He's a good one. Um, he'll be at the Gasp event as well, so we'll have a look at him. But Are we good to see you, mate? Yeah, bro. No, I'm excited. Ollie's very good. Yeah. Uh, Six foot, I see six foot two. Fucking up. Okay. I knew, I knew he was pretty tall, mate. I knew he was pretty tall. Yes. Yeah, six... All the tall boys repping, Ollie, mate. Good man. Yes, sir. Um, right. What did who? What names did you have? Hold on. Joey Steve. He uh said what's that he the, wanted. What's the Instagram? The Joey. So J O yeah, then Steve. Oh, I think it should be there. S T. That's him there. Oh. Boom. There he is, mate. Very good, mate. Yeah, that's him. That's him being coached by myself. Just gets the work done, mate. Yeah. <laughs> just gets the work done. Natty, just to specify. Um, that's very good, Natty. Yeah, he's competing next year, bro, uh, at some point. So... He is good, bro. He is good. Doesn't realise how good he is, but then again, I probably prefer people like that who actually don't realise how good they are and just keep working and just doing the do. He's followed the plan every day for the past. I think he's been working with me now for nearly 70 weeks. So Jesus. he's just been, I should say, that's his year's progress with myself. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, man, he's just absolutely blown up. Blown up, mate. Like, his front lat spread's pretty ridiculous. He's a... Uh, Post posteriorly, he's improving. So it's like his back, his hamstrings come on really well. Um, but like quads are really good from the front. Just needs more back. That's all it is. More back, more everywhere. Just prioritize the more muscle to the posterior. But as you can see there, mate, he's uh he's made some good progress. Very he's good. Made good progress. Yeah, very, very cool. <laughs> He's good. And then finishing off with um, with Nat, bro. Ah, big dog. The, the absolute freak that he is. The big dog. Yeah, mate. Ridiculous, bro. It's actually uh, stupid, bro. It's actually so it, stupid. It, it's, it's pretty retarded, mate. Can't lie to you. Um, I can't really get over it to be fair, bro. It's absolutely mental. Um, so yeah. yeah, this is just my Wi Fi is taking a hit at the moment. Um, if if anyone watching this doesn't follow that and does genuinely enjoy watching bodybuilding, follow that. Um, please, please, like he's one person who he is arguably one of the first people I looked up to when it comes to bodybuilding. Um, when I first got into bodybuilding. I went to the same school as Nat, so I knew who he was. 
And then I saw pictures of him, mate, and he won the junior title. And ever since then, mate, I followed him along. And uh, and yeah, here we are. Yeah, bro. Here we are, mate. Just uh, looking ridiculous, bro. Absolutely ridiculous. Coming up to the end of his improve improvement phase now. I think he's going to go into a little bit of a health phase, maybe, and then go from there. So sick, bro. It's so good. But thank you, guys. That's a nice little episode. I think we should probably do more of the like Q and A's and great physiques probably uh, in one. You know, just sort of split it up. But thank you as always. Thank you for putting your names into the into the hat. We pulled you out. But other than that, thank you all for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, all of that good stuff. If you want to see more of those episodes, please find them across and tell us. But also as well, Connor will put up a box and I will as well. And you can put your physiques in there. And we'll go from there. If you want to get on next time because we've got a lot of backlogged ones so we'll make sure we get everyone done but we'll see you in the next one peace mm -hmm.